Welcome to Crashing Game Night. My name is Matt Zioria. On tonight's episode, the voice of Aerith herself, Brie White, is Crashing Game Night with us. How are you doing, Brie? I'm doing excellent. How are you? Doing well. And uh, Brie and I are joined by, of course, the one Gerard Barrera. Hello, all my fellow nerds. This is a glorious day, and we have an amazing guest for you. Thank you for joining us, and uh, let's get to it. And then, of course, uh, Lions Main, as always, Jason Baladio is with us. The Main. How's it going, guys? How's it going today? <laughs> it's good. Very good. Um, so, yeah, Bree, how's your week been? I mean, you've been having, you had a nice little fun travel experience up to Boston. That's right. Yeah, this week is all about, uh, has been all about recovery since last weekend was all about PAX. So mm -hmm. I uh, I knew I'd be exhausted after PAX, so I made sure to schedule in at least two or three days of defined rest days. And uh, you know me, I did no resting at all. So. <laughs> Good job, did Brianna. You, did you end up with the PAX flu, as everyone calls it? You know what? I did not get the PAX pox. <laughs> But I like that. Yeah, that's I've heard Pax Pox, Pax Plague. Uh, yeah, I keep hearing about it, but <laughs> so far, so far, so good. Um, of course, you know some illnesses have that two-week incubation period, <laughs> so I might yeah, not be which, safe, but for now, I'm I'm feeling good. Which, yeah, for the three of you, you guys are all in that new pocket, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I'm it's not, all right. Yeah. Just don't really go to Costco. Worried. Yeah. Don't go to Costco. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so good. Love it. I love I love Costco, but you know it's it's a uh, it's quite a mess. You know. The madhouse right now. Oh yeah. I had a picture earlier and it was just. Oh man. Oh boy. It's it's it's, it's chaos. Oh. Preppers and Doomsday, like this is it. This a is lot the of day. People, gotta... A lot of people are getting a little bit. Uh, too paranoia too par too much paranoia yes yeah that's that's kind of my opinion on it too mm -hmm. i think that kind of comes to the territory more more and more people get a little have that like fear mongering mm -hmm. where I, I feel like a few years back it was like well there's there was only like a few incidents here we're we're fine but now more and more people i think are more a, a bit more fearful so mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah, well, I, I don't think it's helped by the uh, the media thriving on no. those clicks. So I, I think that Perfect. there's a certain level you have to balance, you know, staying aware and, um, you know, letting people know it is serious. So do wash your hands and take good care of yourself. But on mm. the other hand, you know, you don't have to freak out. Let's stop, you know, buying everything out and <laughs> making it so that no one can go shopping anymore. That's yeah. a bit much. <laughs> That's the same thing it is when people when it you know, they find out we're going to get like a foot of snow out here in Virginia. It's like, oh, my God, we got to go buy everything and stock up. And I'm like me, the Colorado guy. I'm going, let's go out and play. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bri, let's let's talk about your uh, your career here. You know, okay. everybody, everybody that's listening to the podcast knows that, you know, FF7. But you've done more than just FF7, <laughs> you know, have I? Um, <laughs> have you? Well, I mean. You have a little bit of an IMDb there. Thank you. Um, you know, made, he's a little uh, guy. Made, he's still growing. <laughs> he's still growing. But hey, you know what? Everybody starts somewhere. You know, That's at right. some point, you have to have. Even I mean, I mean, John, when you talk to him about like how his career started, it was like he wanted to do voiceovers for like co corporation videos and stuff. So you all start somewhere. That's right. Yeah. So um, you've been kind of as far as Courtney or IMDb, you've been acting in shorts and TV movies and a couple of features since 2010. Um, so we're going yeah, on a that decade of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your career highlights, um, which these are some that people understand, is you were on an episode of Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. I was. That short, I mean, it was a great series, short-lived, but it was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed it, too. I love the international aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And... You were also in Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. You were uncredited for that, though. So how did you manage that one, to be in the movie but uncredited? Well, it, it is one of my saddest career moments to date uh -oh. that I filmed for it, but they cut my part in the final cut. 
Oh. And I wasn't oh. even in the deleted scenes or anything like that. So I have nothing oh. to show for it at all. Oh, that's sad sucks. day. Yeah, but oh. I did actually have a line across from Andy Samberg in the movie, which would have been so cool to show. Um, but now all I can do is talk about it wistfully. Wistfully. <laughs> oh, fun man. memories. Oh, yeah. what a bummer. And yeah, then it was you supposed were... to be like a like a fun outdoor pool shoot, and then uh, it was raining that day. So they couldn't use oh. any of the footage, I'm guessing. Oh. Or just, That's... you know, I never know. Like, maybe I just sucked so bad. They were like, God, get this scene out of here. This girl <laughs> is so I, I, bad. Yeah. I'm sure it was because of time. Yeah. Do, do you remember <laughs> the line? Um, I'm... Yeah, um, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. I don't know if it's like oh. NDA because it's like it's part of the script and it's like really it's a very specific joke. So, oh. I don't know. Yeah. Which... We hear all about not violating NDAs. Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, we've had, you know, we've had other voice actors on, and that was one thing we pride ourselves on. We don't ever dive into anything that you. you could get you in trouble for. Thank you. Um, and then finally, you were also in Occupants bueno. With, no bueno. uh, with Robert Ricardo. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people, if they know that name, not only was he Ms. Meg in the movie Legend with Tom Cruise, but he was also the doctor on Star Trek Voyager. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how was it working with like Gary Sinise, Robert Picardo, Andy Samberg, some some guys that are known within Hollywood ranks? I totally forgot he was in Legend. Most That's people so do. I totally he's forgot so he was much in Legend. Makeup. That's right. And he's got like he's got three lines. That's it. That's so gnarly. Yeah, I, most I'm people sorry. I totally him forgot about that. Star Trek, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's mostly Star Trek. I was like, yeah. he's a okay. legend? But yeah. Jerry, you should know I'm a nerd like that. I love Legend. Tom Cruise, Tim Curry as Darkness himself. Yeah. Wow. You know, Jennifer, Jennifer Connelly. I, no, I that's not Jennifer Connelly. That's, um, it's the one Her from twin? First Bueller's, it's from First Bueller's Day Off. Um, <laughs> oh, that's Mia, right. Um, I, I get that confused all the time. Yeah. Okay, wait, though, because Jennifer Connelly, I'm pretty sure, is the same person as Demi Moore. They I'm pretty sure they are the same person, they... and there's a giant conspiracy in Hollywood to make them seem like two people, but I get them mixed up every time I see them. <laughs> they totally every time. do look alike. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a fun tangent. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Mia uh, Sarah is the the one that played Lily. The, the okay, princess. Okay, okay. Also in Fast Times. That's right. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, Ferris Bueller's. That's right. That's yep. right. Oh, wow. Uh, so the question, if I remember, was <laughs> how is it to work with some, some big Hollywood guys? Yeah. Um, to which my response would be, uh, it felt super natural and not like supernatural. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like paranormal. No, it was just very, uh, like I felt like I had been kind of training for it my whole life. I felt like all of the sets that I've been on have been exceedingly professional and that's all I've ever wanted out of the acting industry. You know, like you said, I've been acting since I was you know, in the little babyest short film in college, you know, a student film, you know, it was their first thing they've ever filmed ever. And back in, um, <laughs> back in my day um, at NYU, <laughs> at NYU, they actually um, held on to this idea that you should film, you should learn to film on film first. So mm -hmm. a lot of my first short films were actually on film. And if you've never worked with film before, um, it's an absolute disaster. <laughs> Every Very true. Second but of the day. <laughs> I totally agree. You should go through the process. You sh I even think you should like further like learn how to edit. But that's a, a bit overboard. But um, I was the same I can't way. Even I can imagine. I um, I try. I tried. I learned a little bit on how to edit, how to cut and splice. Um, but it was. Uh, 
and then the <laughs> machines and it's a whole yeah. thing they had to like edit at the editing bay instead of like at <laughs> home in the comfort like in their yeah. pjs oh. yeah yeah but that was Ugh. my that's how i first learned and then uh I, I, I actually got really really like over the editing process because it was like dude this is mm-hmm. this is a lot like this is for yeah. that time and so i went back to like yeah editing in in uh final cut pro and all of that but it was a cool experience and learning on how to do it you know yeah. with photography i think it's the same way too because i learned on film i learned I film. all I still of that. think um the dark room uh processing your own pictures i think that's the best way to do it even though it's more expensive i also enjoyed the dark room uh, immensely oh yeah i learned all of it how yeah. to even develop my own film you know do the dark room work all of that and honestly understanding that one frame is one click and you it's captured that's it you can't do anything about it whereas with digital i can take a picture look at the back of my camera go mm, lighting's not as great let's do some settings, change it on the fly. Nah, film man, it's it's one and done. And I loved it. And it made me appreciate, especially black and white, because black and white film is just so much better than digital. So I, it's something... I don't know. I think that's a generational thing. I'm kind of like out with the old and with the new. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I, once I went once I went digital though, uh, yeah. I realized I could take shots like with waterfalls and stuff that I could never do with 35 millimeter sure. because yeah. it just can't keep up with the shutter speed. So trust me, I love the move to digital. Editing on my computer, like you said, in my PJs or whatever, just yep. there. But it makes still it so kind much of easier. miss miss oh. the old film. Yeah, I miss I'm the dark way. room. I miss, I miss the dark, the dark room. room. I miss film, but you gotta adapt or die, and really like nowadays Mm -hmm. you gotta go digital like you have to yeah yeah. it's just just so much quicker so much freedom yeah Mm -hmm. yeah but i do respect a lot of those directors that uh especially uh recently a few years ago um argo ben affleck was very adamant about using uh 35 millimeter and he did that whole movie shot in in film I can definitely see the textural difference and I can understand it um, artistically, but uh, I would not want to be on a set where we're filming with actual film based on my experiences with students working on it. um, And I distinctly remember we had already been shooting a film for about 12 hours because every student film has 12 hour days. Um, Maybe it was even more than that. Maybe it was our 15th hour, something ridiculous. And um, we were getting our very last shot. And halfway through, we ran out of film. We were oh all my God. hungry. Oh. We were all tired. Oh. So the, did, you, did you guys decide to like, did you have to cut the day and come back? or No. Did you, no, did of they course were like, That's not. It? No, they were like, we're going to change the film reel. So they went into the closet. Oh, they sure did. Yeah. Um, So they went into the closet. They sealed up all the light, and they're they're feeling their way into changing the film in the Mm -hmm. camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, at one point, and we're just listening through the closet door. At one point, they say, "Shit." Oh. And we're all like, "What?" And they're like, "It's tangled." And so they had to like sit through completely respooling it. And we're hungry. We're tired. It's freezing. We're exhausted mentally, emotionally. And we just need to get the last five seconds of footage. And oh, oh I will never goodness. forget that experience. And I will, I will never work on film ever again. <laughs> That's a, like a bad Snickers commercial. Really <laughs> it was yeah. awful. It was awful, awful experience. Um, but, uh, that being said, having come from from that comparison and then working on like a professional set, it feels really, really good. Um, mm-hmm. It feels really great to be to be everybody at their best, most efficient, and um, at their kindest as well. Um, one thing that's really surprised me in all the sets that I've been on, especially meeting Gary Sinise, um, he was just so exceedingly thoughtful and kind. Um, when he did not have to be, you know, getting our makeup done in the trailers. Um, and I think that there's a lot of um, rumors or stories about, you know, Hollywood types being elitist and, and awful and divas, but that has not been my experience with, with anyone that I've worked with. 
I have only experienced that a few times along with um I've have I've only had one job where we shot in film and luckily it went smooth it wasn't that it was a short film and but it was a world war ii themed uh short film which got me worried like oh god if anything goes wrong exact like it's just gonna be terrible but um yeah the more professional it is the more everyone's kind of just happy like because everyone's getting their their stuff their their work done and they know what they're doing Yes, exactly. Um, I I have been on some like Hallmark and uh, uh, smaller sh- shoots where it's just everyone's crying about how much they're getting paid. We're at we're averaging eighteen hours. Uh, multiple. Ooh. No. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. Multiple um, location because we're doing multiple pages a day. So it was just it's just like. It's night and day when you're at a professional shoot and when you're at, like, we're on a budget, like, low-grade well, Hallmark movie where... There's definitely something to be said for time is money. And yeah. you don't need to spend the time if you have the money. Yeah. And so that's that's definitely true. And that's why on the bigger budget... And Occupants was actually super low budget, but it was also, you know, very um, bare bones. And we had a great director who was able to, like, rally the troops. So um, there was nobody there who didn't have like a really immense love for the project and wanting to do everything right and be professional. Um, but uh, yeah, all of the other sets had the budget and um, it showed. You, yeah, it. Funny, you, you yeah, mentioned right. that about occupancy is like I was watching your film reel as I was kind of, you know, verify my notes and stuff. And I was like, you know, that actually seems like an interesting movie. I'm actually going to try and find you should check it out. So it's on it. Amazon. Yes. Is you can it? rent it on Amazon, yeah. 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 It, is, it is a really interesting concept. Um, for those who don't know, it's um, a couple are um, focused on healthy, clean living and a, a detox diet. And so they uh, rent these video cameras and they uh, want to document their journey. And uh, the seed is planted that uh, when you detox... Sometimes, um, you know, all that junk is out of your system and you can actually access another reality. And, uh, of course, chaos ensues. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a thriller. It's a really interesting concept. The idea of, like, alternate realities, it actually... That's kind of interesting. So, like, if you're clear, you, you clear your body, you clear your mind, and then you are open to yeah, something that's, other. That's the idea of it, Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Um, it, it is super interesting in the way that um, it navigates with the lore. Um, and it, it actually really inspired people. And uh, it spawned its own comic book, too. So there was a comic oh, book cool. spinoff in the same universe as Occupants. Yeah. And there's been some rumor about an Occupants 2, a sequel to it. So Ooh, we're going to cool. <laughs> see how that goes. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to be a part of. So talking about some chaos because of everything surrounding it and all the opinions let's talk final fantasy 7 let's do it so with your film career right this was your first voiceover accredited on ibm or uh, imdb so what was the audition process like for you and like how did you find out how did, did they approach you did you just see a posting for it uh yeah so they found me through my theatrical agent um, the casting office did. So I have never done a voiceover thing ever before. And um, they they found me just on from my theatrical agent. The casting director watched my demo that's on IMDb, uh, the same one that's on there right now, and said, oh, she could work. Let's bring her in. Um, I imagine that if they <laughs> – I don't know this for sure, but I imagine that they auditioned a lot of people if they thought, let's bring this inexperienced noob in. Um, (laughs) because they were looking for something specific. And so um, in getting the audition, I, of course, knew a little bit about the character, but I hadn't played the original game. So um, I immediately started researching. I started watching scenes from Advent Children, Crisis Core. Yes. Um, I read up in her, I mean, she has character bios like crazy on every, Mm -hmm. you know, FFP, everything. So I, I, I just consumed as much as I could. Uh, I learned about the other voice actors, listened to their voices, um, and just kind of um, sat right here at this desk that I'm at right now 
And I just said some lines, listened back, thought oh, a little bit more of this. And then I said some more lines, listened back and thought, mm, I'll adjust it a little bit like this. And then I just kind of like created a, a voice that I thought fit her really well and that um, that fit me as well and went in. And uh, I guess they liked it. <laughs> <laughs> of course they did. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, still so, feel, I still feel very lucky that I even got to audition, let alone that they, they chose me. And that seems to be the, the common thought process from everybody. You know, when I've heard some different things from it. And, like, especially with talking with John, he's like, to find out that he was auditioning for the very character he loved growing up he was like oh my god it's like this thing is special i don't think i mean you guys now seeing the fans especially with packs and whatnot i think you guys can kind of understand how special this game is to a lot of people yeah definitely it's been a long time coming everyone's been waiting for it including this one yeah this has been something i've been Uh i've been wanting i've wanted this since like 2012 i've been talking about when when jason and i first worked at our video game shop yeah like this is something i've wanted for years like this needs to be remade and they're taking way too way too long we made him we made him apologize at e3 last year so he was this naysayer and he was like we're not getting a date we're not going to get a a date we're not going to get a trailer we're not going to get anything at e3 this so we all made a other postponement uh, of the game yeah. and, and everything. So I was just like, I was a little, uh, I was a, I'm a little upset, <laughs> you know. Sure. <laughs> so he was salty. He was straight yeah, up salty. Was salty. <laughs> so we made a bet on the podcast. We said, okay, if you get a date and a trailer, or we get to play at 83, we're gonna make you apologize. And we got all three. So. We got all three. Yeah. So we ended up doing a live video on YouTube of him in front of the Square Enix booth, right there on the show floor. And he had to do the Spider-Man, um, the end of the Spider-Verse, Peter Parker dance. <laughs> the Spider-Man, I did That's the Spider-Man bet. 3 dance, to yeah. be pre- to yeah. be precise, yes. Well, if you want to do Spider-Man 3 too. But, the um, emo, Tommy McGuire. Yeah. Yeah, like it. yeah, yeah, hey, hey. that was my punishment, and then I had to say I apologize to Square Enix. Yes. <laughs> yep. I was hoping and, and I was hoping we'd you. be able to I was hoping we'd be able to do it in front of Neil, but he was having to head over to the booth to take care of some stuff. Oh, yeah. So we went ahead and just filled it right there. Nice. <laughs> yeah. um, and great. then I turned it into a TikTok this past week. Perfect. <laughs> um. So. With that, with I know you've played some other Final Fantasies from listening to um, your ending for Final Fantasy 15 on your Twitch stream. So it's kind of, yeah. I'm starting to catch up on your channel. Oh, <laughs> it's, thank you. I'm trying as much as I, you know, 40 hour week job, new baby and, and all that. I'm, I'm trying to catch up. Um, well, that means a lot to so me. What, despite being busy that you're watching my content at all. Thank you. I'm trying. <laughs> I appreciate it. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, just like I'm trying to listen to all the podcasts I used to listen to, because I listen to, you know... Um, yeah, I have a lot to catch you know, up on, too. What's Good Games and Kind of Funny and um, Drew Creaseman, who does Final Fantasy Weekly. Um, you know, his Rockies podcast, has been trying to keep up with that. Trying to keep up with Soldier First Class's content. There's which a lot, yeah. I can't anymore, but, you know, I try. Um you know, especially with running, you know, the podcast with us, writing articles for this. So um, what Final Fantasy games have you played? So I've played Final Fantasy 14. That was my first one, which is their I MMO. Um, um, Jason's yeah. crazy about that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, my gosh, me too. What server yeah. are you on? I'm on uh, Brunhilde. Gotcha. Like... I'm on Exodus. Exodus? Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, different data servers. So I just recently checked my playtime, and I'm, you know... Over 1,700 hours in. Damn. Okay. Okay. So I'm That's like a legit. big Final Fantasy 14 fan. Um, I'm just a little bit obsessed. They've taken way too much of my money. It's really not fair. They basically, <laughs> at this point, Square That's Enix and I are like even there. for payment for like, I did Final oh, Fantasy 7 Remake and like, but the amount of money that I've spent on 14, it like balances out. <laughs> yeah, it, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I played a lot of a lot of 14. That was a lot of fun. What role uh, do you play? 
Uh, my my main is Red Mage. Right, main Red Mage. I I came up through a Realm Reborn as a Black Mage, and oh, yeah, uh, Black when Mage. Red Mage came out in Stormblood. I went crazy because it was everything I loved about Black Mage, but a lot quicker, and that really suited me. So I switched over to Red Mage main, and then That's since true. then I've built up a White Mage. Um, and then I thought, wow, they're coming out with Blue Mage. I'm gonna love this. And then I yeah. hated it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't level that at all. Do you want to say hi? Come on in, pup. Say hi to the good Aww. people. She's bothering me, so I have hmm. to give her a little bit of attention. Hey, that's, it's just that's Atari. not a problem. Okay. <laughs> it, his it's... name is Atari? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's Atari? so adorable. Oh, that's yeah, a it's name. a really cute name for this little oh. girl, huh? Hi. Wow. Okay. Um. So, yes. Hey, we, uh, don't, a lot of mind, we don't mind cra- We don't mind. don't Atari crashing game night. I mean, occasionally okay. my son... My son will just like he'll be up. He'll you know my wife had to go yeah. take care of something, so he'll come hang out with a you know my two year old and oh, and whatnot. Fun. It's kind of entertaining. Oh. Um, Sorry. Just so we're we're perfectly okay, fine with that. So um right. so, so yeah, yeah so I played 14, 14, and fourteen and then I played yeah. fifteen on the channel. Oh. Yeah, and that's it. Wow. And now I'm playing seven on the channel, the original. For your oh, first you playthrough. For my first playthrough, yeah. Oh. It was kind of funny. I was listening to the uh, the latest one with you and Erica on it, and you're like, "Oh yeah, they get extra uh, damage for back attack." John told me that. I was like, "Okay, that kind of tipped me off that you hadn't ever played the game." Yeah. And um, you were, I mean, honestly, I know you know with what you kind of know a little bit about what's what's happening with the seven remake. You guys don't know the final final cut yet, but. You're in for a treat. This is the story and everything. The original story, is, I love it. Yeah, yeah uh, it's actually been really interesting God. because so many people, when they play Remake or when they watch the trailers for Remake, they have that feeling of, wow, this is exactly how I envisioned it. This is mm-hmm. this is exactly, um, you know, it's crazy that I got to see it in four pixels before and now I get to see it in HD. That's really interesting because I have the exact equal and opposite experience Mm -hmm. like i feel like i've i know more about remake obviously because that was what i was a part of first and then to go back and see its source material is really special Mm -hmm. because i make the same comparisons of wow that's that's the same thing word for word but then i have it in past time travel instead of future time travel Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's really really an interesting experience hopping in a delorean (laughs) yeah All of us appreciate this game so much because yeah. that's exactly why. This, all of us grew up on that on the on the PS1 multiple disc PS1 game, yeah. Yeah. and uh, now even playing the demo because I, I just started the demo today, Yay. it just looks so beautiful. It's yeah. just it he looks wasn't, amazing. Yeah. He wasn't gonna do it. He wasn't gonna. He was gonna wait notice. until the game came out. And yeah, I'm on that I'm, same I'm train too. Pretty. Yeah, I'm usually pretty strict on like, no, I want to be surprised. I want to play the whole thing. But um, I'm also a procurer of things. <laughs> and ah. the moment I see anything available, like, uh, I want yeah. that. So when I saw the uh, the free um, theme, it, w- once you play the demo that you get after it, yeah. uh, I immediately, okay, I, I have to get the theme. Yeah, I want Square it. Enix is <laughs> pretty smart. They, uh, mm-hmm. they know how to how yeah. to market things. <laughs> yeah, especially now they're going to be doing with Butterfinger and Crunch Bars. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on. Yeah. yeah there's a I lot need of to try and stuff. track they some of those down now. just got the little um, yeah. cloud emote for Twitter for our hashtag. Yep. Saw that. Um, and then I thought I saw an Instagram filter. Did I see something like that? Was that Square or did someone else do that? Like, was that I, like a... I don't know. I don't spend a ton of time on Instagram as much oh, as I gotcha. should. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, uh-huh. I saw. I think it must have been a Reddit post where um, it's like, "What Final Fantasy VII remake character are you?" And it'll like scroll through. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, I think that, it's one of yeah, that. That might have yeah. been fan made. I'm not sure. Yeah, I might have to try that. That'll be interesting. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it's funny you talk about like 14 stuff. I actually did play a little Realm Reborn. Yeah. I started out as a dragoon, and then I just didn't have the time, and I was like, well, you know what was it 12 15 bucks a month at the time i was like yeah i, I don't need to be spending that right now and <laughs> haven't gone back but jason oh, every I'm... year we go to every time we go to e3 right every we know year. where he's gonna be over at the square enix booth don't hate yeah but don't hate i'm not like, hate. I'll, 
I'll be there again this year. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, fair. Fine. Well, that's the mission know, every year yeah. is get the I, shirt. I, but play Jason, the you have to work this time. I you actually have to work at E3. That's that's <laughs> what the that's what the first day for us is gonna be. You know, work. You know, <laughs> getting my shirt the work way. You know. Of course. <laughs> right? exactly. uh, but no, like they always they always joke around with me because every year at E3 they have the realm they have the Final Fantasy 14 uh, battle contest. Yeah. And I am ready again. Hopefully they'll be there again with an, one of the newer ones. Well, at, at PAX they did Ruby Weapon. Oh, that would have been such a good shirt. I hope they're, they're... Yeah, it's a really cool shirt. <laughs> really I cool. Uh, I didn't want to wait in line, so I said, hey, can I get a shirt? And they were like, for you, yes. 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 If they yeah. said no, I would have been surprised. Yeah, that would have been like, ridiculous. No. Like, really? Um, like, oh I, was, I was told no at, a, at E3 last year. Um, and part of the reason why is because, A, I didn't ask early enough, but they made these um, special edition, the um, the art that um, I think it had like Sephiroth and it was all flaming and like mm -hmm. I think Nomura himself drew it. Um, it, it was put on a T-shirt and um, those T-shirts were super special edition oh, and okay. they were given out I randomly to yeah. one set of yeah. people who went through uh -huh. the demo line yeah. each day. I knew it. I, yeah, so they I really only it. had like they only had they must have only had you know thirty of these shirts total. And yeah. at the end of E3, I was like, hey, can I get one of those? And they were like, we're they're gone. We have no uh, more for you. Yeah, I remember seeing. And one I of think those. you I think you said something about that, and we were like, they have to. I think they only choose one yeah. a day. I went yeah. through the demo twice to try and get one of those shirts. Yeah, we did. The chances of that, very, very small. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we're all in the same boat here. Didn't get that cool shirt. Want, want. But it was wah. worth it playing the demo twice. Because oh, then, good. Yeah, because oh, then I started playing it like I did, you know, I was like, okay, cool. I understand the battle system pretty thoroughly. Mm -hmm. I want to see how fast, you know, just how quickly I could do it. You know, oh just, sure, yeah. Just do the final boss, so it was kind of fun because I, for me, Final Fantasy 13 is my favorite Final Fantasy game. So to me, the ATB gauge, mm -hmm. how you're interacting, how you're attacking, that is straight out of 13. So for mm -hmm. me, it was like immediately fingers starting to twitch that you know you're so used to switching with lightning, switching her paradigms and everything. It was, I love it, and I can't wait to see what else they've packed into said combat system because from what people have been saying that got to uh play the the media three hour event mm -hmm. or something the other day that yeah. it's just insane how much is in this game yeah um, it's gonna be great you're gonna love it mm -hmm. so with that what's been you know you talk about the fandom and stuff what's <laughs> what's it like being introduced to the final fantasy fandom and the craziness that comes with it both with packs and um because you did go you went to KubaCon, right uh huh. Yeah, in yep. Vancouver in November. Yep. So, how, what's it like seeing that fandom in, up in person and and seeing what it means to people? Um. You know, I. I I just feel so so grateful to be a part of it. Of course. Um. So much of of. Aerith, but also Final Fantasy in general, is you know, a legacy. It's really been, you know, the original seven came out in, in 97, which was at this point, 23 years ago. So people have had so many, so much time and so many iterations of this character to love her, you know, from Kingdom Hearts to Advent Children, Crisis Core. And um, when people come up to me and say, you know, how much Aerith means to them, and usually, <laughs> a little pet peeve of mine, usually they say Aerith. <laughs> they walk up and they go, oh, Eris means so much to me, um, which that doesn't usually bother me. Um, I was talking about it earlier. It doesn't bother me if people say she's Eris to me because I understand that. Um, but don't like correct me on how it's spelled in the remake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not spelled that way. <laughs> so um, when people come up to me and uh, tell me how much she means to them, Mostly, I feel a little sense of, man, I hope I did it right. I hope I did her justice. Um, and I hope they picked the right person for the job, Square Enix. Um, I hope that uh, that I can honor her legacy. 
Um, mostly that's sort of how that has been. Like I know that people have like action figures of her and posters right. on their wall of her. And, and it's just kind of crazy that I get to be a part of something so loved. It is a little bit of pressure, but mostly it's just mm-hmm. very exciting that that I get this introduction to her character, too, because I wasn't super familiar with uh, any of the seven characters before this process. Mm-hmm. So on the video game piece of that side, what was it? What was your favorite part of making the game? Favorite part of making the game? That I won't. Think... That won't violate an NDA. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, NDAs. Um, so I think one of the most like surprising things, but one of the coolest, was doing all the battle cries, um, and like <laughs> grunts and stuff. Cool. Um, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm surprisingly good at it, and I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah, I have like a really difficult time with dialogue, but when it comes to battle grunts, like this girl's a one take wonder. And I, 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 oh, I, I attribute yeah. it to just playing a lot of video games. So I've heard a lot of battle cries and grunts in my head over the years and being able to like replicate them, but with my own twist and, and accurate to the character is something that I just have so much fun with. And I don't get in my head about it at all. You just kind of like let a sound out and you just imagine the scenario, imagine the context, you let a sound out and then you try it a couple more times and, and it's so fun for me. That's cool. That's so fun. fun. Yeah, Yeah, I think that that is the most just like genuine, clean, fun part of the process. What was it like finally getting to meet some of those voice actors at at PAX? Because I know for a lot of times you guys didn't actually see each other face to face recording wise. Right. So obviously I had met John and Erica before, but this was my first time meeting Gideon and Britt. Um, Great people. Amazing people. And so interesting that... Somehow Square Enix managed to, or the casting director managed to cast people based on their essence. So, um, you know, Britt was exactly how you'd expect her to be. She was, she was so sweet and so warm and so perfectly Tifa. And Gideon mm-hmm. was like so, you know, charming and so leading mm-hmm. man and so perfectly big. <laughs> um, it just just every moment of it you feel like you're meeting the characters and i think they did that on purpose because it is it is stunning it's great and what's funny is that when i was playing the demo and it came to jesse because i've been following erica on twitter for a while especially yeah. with like fire emblem um for three houses and stuff i started following a lot of the voice actors from that and just kind of seeing how she is and in, in her pictures and how her essence is on Twitter. And then all I could see is her face on Jesse <laughs> saying yes. the lines in the game. And it was like, wow, it just, it fits. Yes, um, it really does. Especially, you know, with John, with Barrett and like hearing oh it and like, gosh. that's the weirdest thing talking to him like in person. Right. And then you see, you hear him doing his lines. I'm like, that's John. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was perfect. The biggest discrepancy actually is that Barrett's, voice and how he is for a big portion of the beginning of the game is he's very mistrusting of cloud he's very snappy and snarky at him doesn't trust him doesn't like him but you don't see his like warmer colors until later whereas with john immediate warm warmth Mm -hmm. as a human being yeah like he just immediately makes you feel so settled and comforted just yeah. by him as a as a human and and it's it's stunning and I like want to learn the techniques and I want to learn the ways because gosh if I could make everybody feel that good just by meeting them the world would be a much better place because John is is amazing he's a very yeah he's a very sweet yeah. man especially look, yes. Matt and I ended up uh, th- like how we got him on the show was we first met him at E3 during i think it was our the first it run was of the, the demo. first run of the demo um yeah. we were in there jerry was off in one corner i was up in the front mm-hmm. row here's john in a ball cap so i didn't even recognize him or anything and he's got noah with him his son yeah and we all go in i'm sitting there playing he walks up and just starts talking to me about it yep so him yeah. and i after <laughs> after the demo we went off on the side we were talking about it and it it's history because i'll sit there uh, you know 
he I actually consider him a friend now. Um yeah. just yeah. from you know being on the podcast a couple yeah. of times and us talking about things. Um he was there quite a bit, you know, help out with my mother because with him losing his mom. So he, him and I were able to to talk about it and he helped me yeah. through a really hard time for me. And um so yeah, John, that whole warmth and settling, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I think I think it's actually good. on the level of superpower, and it's really hard <laughs> yeah. for for me to express properly mm-hmm. how dramatic his aura is. Uh-huh. Yeah, like it 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 really is a it was, superpower. It was yeah, it's very weird because Matt was just saying it after literally when we left the demo, um, we thought like, oh, okay, man, we'll see you later, but. Like we we started talking to him and his son right after the demo, getting to know him. His yeah. son is kind of following his footsteps. He's going into voice acting. It was just it, he was just like the sweetest guy, yeah. and it was just so great to have him on the show and like just to be able to meet him. Yeah, he was very sweet, and I I totally understand what you both are saying because yeah. yeah. And speaking of with John and stuff, I mean it. The episode of you guys streaming on your twitch channel yeah ff7 was great (laughs) just the way you guys you guys were playing off of each other and whatnot so i have to ask i mean what got you into doing twitch oh well i actually um started my youtube channel back in 2015 and um i started uh with my brother actually playing video games as a as a channel called sibling rivalry Nice. Uh, nice. And uh, f- a few months oh, later, cool. he uh, wanted to get, go back to school and focus on that. And YouTube does take up a lot of time when you're really serious about it, which I was. So he just didn't have the time for it anymore. So I rebranded as Strange Rebel Gaming. That's ki- I tried to keep the SR for sibling rivalry. That's why Strange nice. Rebel. Nice. <laughs> um, so honoring my roots. Um, and then, you know, part of YouTube strategy, part of being a content creator, the strategy from the very beginning was diversify, 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 because you never know when YouTube is going to pop off and, you know, yeah. a, a big ad pop at bad apocalypse or demonetization. And it's just not going to be a viable strategy anymore or worse. You're hit by, um, you know, mature content. The algorithm doesn't like you anymore. So like mm-hmm. when your content or when your entire business strategy is based on a single platform, you are going to have a problem if that platform doesn't behave the way that you, your business wants it to behave. So mm-hmm. immediately, um, Twitch was something that I started looking into because it was really coming up at the time and it was starting to get huge. And so I thought, okay, well, how can I make this work for me to um, use the same amount of content, but be able to use it for both platforms? And so I kind of created this like hybrid uh, content strategy that involved live streaming all my content on Twitch first, then pulling all of that and editing it for YouTube in a way that is optimized for both of them, which has been really hard because they're both very different platforms. They have both different viewers and desires and and, um, ways that you can interact with both both platforms effectively that's a a great idea it's yeah yeah yeah, it is a challenge but it is it is a crap ton of work yeah um yeah but um, coming from a fellow editor i understand how much time that takes especially when you're when you're streaming from twitch and then you have to get everything to focus on like entertaining for youtube because it is it is totally different you're absolutely right and yeah, uh, yeah com- that's awesome. Yeah, one of the hardest things is um, being able to, uh, you know, <clears throat> one of the biggest uh, positives of Twitch is that it's interactive and you're talking with the chat the entire time. However, yeah. on YouTube, if you're posting content where you're having a conversation with someone else and YouTube viewer doesn't get to be involved, it feels like, well, why the heck am I watching? Mm-hmm. So watching back a conversation that you don't get to be a part of, people don't really like on YouTube. So I've had to come up with a strategy of what I call immersed mode. And that is when I'm playing a story-based game, I don't interact with the chat so that it cuts better to YouTube. Oh, oh good idea. Good yeah. idea. You don't, you don't, you don't put like a little pause and like, right. You know, and just chit chat with them. And then that's exactly I, it. So I, I take so little kind of pausing using, moments to chat with the, the audience kind of on Twitch. Your film, your film background to, to help yourself with editing. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been doing it for a long time, and my focus has always been on high quality content and how can I make the most of my time, and um, that's just kind of the strategy that I've stumbled upon there and uh, refined over time as well. It hasn't been easy. That's some good advice, though. 
yeah that are that really, that really be, you know twitchers and i mean like for me it's like i think my only my only downside is because i don't really gain you know stream or that much or all is that twitch doesn't archive your stuff so you can only, it only it's there for like a week and then it's gone Unless you're an unless affiliate. you highlight it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's an affiliate only thing. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, you have to hit the certain tier and then it's all your content's there. Whereas if sure. you're not, you don't have the followers or whatnot, they just drop it. So I think that's where yeah, you know, we've used YouTube a little bit more is because we can just archive it, we can get on, we can do our videos here and there when we have the time to do it, and then you well, know it's and- all there. A lot of people will say, you know, as a content creator, Twitch is so much better because X, Y, Z. And I'll be honest, Twitch is much easier to monetize. There's a culture of monetization Mm -hmm. there that just isn't the same on YouTube where they expect free content. And it's weird for you to ask for to be paid for that. Um, But the bonus about YouTube is that that exact feature that you're talking about is that you can post something and eight years later, it's still getting views. Mm -hmm. So being able to make your content evergreen is something that is super, super valuable as well, because you only need to do the work as much as it is. It is a lot of work, but you only need to do it that once for that playthrough. And it can bring enjoyment to people for many, many years to come. Oh, yeah. Mm. So I have to ask you, which do you prefer streaming on PS4 or the Switch? Interesting. Uh, Because I've seen you... I've seen you streaming with both because you've done Zelda, you've done, you know, uh-huh. FF15, all that. Uh, they're the same to me. I, I like them both. I, I don't really notice a difference in streaming either quality or anything based on the console. I notice a big difference when I switch from console to PC. So I do prefer streaming on PC because when I am going through the capture card, I've noticed there's a slight mm-hmm. delay. So I have to sync oh. everything up with okay. that delay. Um, and sometimes it's not always the same amount of frame uh. <laughs> So I, I'm actually to an in knock that but file there. I'm much streaming on PC to eliminate that delay. And Very really nice. quick, what is your uh, your opinion on Breath of the Wild? Because I absolutely love it, and I've. I, <laughs> Do not bring up. We are not starting this year. Oh boy! I've been made fun of more than enough times from the from the group because I've done like three or four like full walkthroughs, finishing the game. Gotcha. I absolutely love it, but uh, I just wanted to know your opinion. So I actually was working as a booth assistant for Nintendo in 2016 E3 when they were demoing. We were there. The wild. We were there. Yeah. What? Oh, sure. Yeah. So that that booth was amazing, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, with the was... weather effects and everything. It yeah. Was nice. All of our all of our pictures. I took a bunch of pictures of Jason and myself at, within oh, the booth. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That booth was nuts. Stat- oh, I wanted to steal so many of those stats. I know. They were amazing. <laughs> it, it, yeah. For those of you who don't know, it was everything was life size. Breath of the Wild, the booth mm-hmm. was built yep. to be like you were yeah. just put into the game. Yep. So they had the like yep. stone cooking pot and the barbecue on the spit, and they had like a life size even... link and a life size hobgoblin, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Even, even just walking in, like the doors mm-hmm. that would open, like. Yes. Oh, it yeah. was so cool. Light up effects. You know what's even cooler, you guys, is that they had uh, pressure pads in the floor. And so walking by certain areas would trigger sound effects or some things to interact with wow. you. Whoa. So I'm not Whoa. kidding. Like that booth was next level. And yeah. like there was no oh, yeah. other booth that had done anything like that in the time. Like everyone's going crazy about the PAX uh, Animal Crossing booth. But like that is like nothing compared to how the Breath of the Wild Uh-oh. booth was for E3 2016. Okay, cool. See, I'm glad so, we did do it. But, and we had we had to dedicate a whole day. A literal yeah. day. A literal Four day just for Zelda. That's terrible and, was, and i'm sorry but it was worth it but that i was bet worth it, was. it yeah no. yeah oh yeah i hate lines See, i'm very line averse so if i wasn't working it i never would have gone in uh, oh really seriously i hate lines so much yeah <laughs> See, i'm a diehard zelda fan and so when i knew it was there i was like i gotta go play it but i'm in the camp that it's not my favorite I, it doesn't have to be your favorite yeah. i mean i is... appreciate i absolutely appreciate for what they've done with it i just yeah. There's some things for me I just don't resonate with me as, from that perspective, you know, breaking weapons, and I felt that some of it was pretty easy. But that being said, 
the work they did to where you're not having any stitched areas. It's just continuous. Mm -hmm. Here it yeah. is. No loads other than going down in the shrines. I mean, yeah. they did an amazing work with it. Yeah. it oh, absolutely. Gorgeous. And the, you know, a lot of people looked at Skyward Sword, which is the very previous Zelda title. And it, it did, the formula felt stale. It mm -hmm. really did. And um, I think that they had been working on this new formula for a little bit long, for, for, for a while before Skyward Sword, um, which is why it felt like Skyward Sword didn't have maybe the attention to detail that a, that a major uh, Zelda title would normally have. Mm -hmm. um, even though I enjoyed Skyward Sword, but it was missing that depth that some of the other games have, like Twilight mm -hmm. Princess or even Wind Waker, even though oh. it was very cartoony, like the actual it's character still one of the, the best story games. had so much depth. Yeah. Um, so I think that um, with Breath of the Wild, when I was demoing it for people, they played the first five minutes, maybe 10 minutes mm -hmm. um, in my area. And in working all of E3, I got to see hundreds of people go through the demo mm -hmm. and what was amazing to me about it is if the object was to get an apple from the tree some people would walk up to the tree climb the tree and pick the apple some people would cut the tree down to get the <laughs> apple yeah. some people would get bombs and bomb the tree to get the <laughs> apple some people could shoot the apple down i mean there were a hundred million ways to get this apple. And that had never been seen in any Zelda games before. Yeah. It was wow. totally, it was, it was, you know, Zelda's biggest critique for such a long time was the hand holding, was the, the lengthy tutorials that you yeah. couldn't get around. It was that you had to, it was completely linear, you know, X item to B item to C mm -hmm. item. Wow. Yes. That, those letters were out of order, but you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So, so they took, Zelda's biggest critique flipped it on its head and said, "All right, off you go then." Yeah. And that's what, what that's yeah. why Breath of the Wild was so so fabulous and I think that Breath of the Wild is such a perfect title for that game because the whole game felt like a breath of fresh air yeah. with characters that you <laughs> love. And um I I think it just cannot be applauded enough for that alone. Yeah. That's a perfect Absolutely. summation that's, of that. Yeah, that's a yeah. Right on the nose. Yeah. What are you? Th what are your thoughts on the second one that's going to be coming out then? Like, I um, feel it's going to be. Cannot wait. So, <laughs> how I could, could I be more down, excited? I, would... I couldn't. Oh yeah. Yeah. I absolutely cannot wait. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm sure. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if they make Zelda a playable character, like a lot of people are thinking from the trailer. Um. Yeah. I don't know. That'll be different. It'll be if they go in that route. It'll be. I know yeah, it'll make a lot of people happy. the first time but... she's been playable. She was playable in uh, Spirit Tracks or Phantom Hourglass or one of the oh, DS. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, she was playable in. Yeah, you are right. Mm -hmm. I don't remember and which one of... it is, though, because <laughs> it's been so long since yeah, I played Yeah, kind of like them, a ghosty, so. so I think it's Phantom mm -hmm. Hourglass. Very well, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, really. I don't know if I'm remembering that poorly. I don't know. I don't know it's... which one. But it's they're both like sequels to each other so i gotta ask you what is your what's your favorite game of all time since you go back a ways with some of the gaming history yikes um game of all time i can't i i, I know it's a cop-out but i can't do it I, I have too many favorites if i'm going by amount of fun had I, I have fun with so many games. If, is it hours played? Is it times I've played through? Is it best story? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you can just have one. Like, you can't have one. But like, like, I, I mean, would what, say, what, like, what's your, a decent top, top five? Yeah. I could I could top? try to do I could try to do a top three. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. If I do a top three, um, Final Fantasy fourteen is in there. Yes. As a um, <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition is in there. Ooh, okay. Ooh. And then, who? What else? <laughs> oh, he's on the through. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll do a top four. Uh, then I have to go with uh, Last of Us or Life is Strange uh -huh. and Life is Strange. Oh, good nice. ones. Yeah. yeah. Which, speaking of Last of Us, it came out today that. 
they are working with HBO, and Neil Druckmann is going to be executive producer. They're making producer. a TV show. Oh, God, yeah. That's TV right. Show. And it's actually going to be on Joel and Ellie's story. Yes. yes. Which is great. A, it'll is, it'll yeah. be amazing to as see a, that reimagined. I was just I, I was just talking to to these two about they chose the best company HB I think for for it to be done right Last of Us Absolutely. they needed like either Showtime or HBO Absolutely. where they allow that kind of freedom because one they are going to need the budget for like the clickers and two if they don't even remotely stick to like the gore or like the scariness of the game. It's not going to work, and they need a studio agree. that will allow you to do that. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah, yeah it, it I, can't be censored, or it's not the same game. Yeah. Exactly. It can't be tamed out. down either. It's going to be great. So, Bri, outside of your, your Twitch channel, what have you been able to play lately? I know you've been traveling with PAX and whatnot, but what have you been able to play and enjoy? Final Fantasy XIV. That's it. <laughs> you want to put a little like shout out to like your... your, your... FC or you know. Oh, my FC is is um is all SRG rebels, uh. But uh, yeah, no, that's that's literally all I've had time for. And go. and and only because fourteen, I make time for if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yes. Like I don't just have free time to do whatever I want with it very often. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh. Yeah, I, I I play I make time for fourteen. <laughs> it's part of my self care, you guys. <laughs> so, Jerry, Jason, did you guys tr- start your Sekiro challenge yet? That's happening actually after uh, we finish this uh, yeah. recording tonight because uh, Jerry flaked on me on Tuesday. I wasn't mentally prepared yet. I wasn't I wasn't <laughs> ready. I'm ready today. I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm, oh, gonna yeah. so, I'm gonna get so upset. I know I am. <laughs> We're in for a doozy. Have you have you have you heard anything about uh, Sekiro? Yeah. Great. Right? Yeah. Have you have you tried it at all or or no. anything? Okay. No, that sounds like a hard game, and those aren't fun for me. Well, it's, yeah. it was deemed one of the toughest games of the year. Yeah, and, it's like it's, it's like a Dark Souls kind of. Yeah, it's a rage yeah. game, and it's yeah. not my jam. Yeah. And it's not it's, for me. Very rarely will I get into the like I've done Dark Souls and I, um, I've raged out of that, uh, but this was so much I uh, like I love the samurai lore and all of that and like ninja games. Right. Yeah. I want to try it. I've seen enough gameplay. I know what I'm getting into. So uh, yeah, I'm ready. Kind Come of. On. Well, one of the biggest things though is because it started <laughs> because uh, both me and Jerry actually saw each other at Black Friday. Oh, yeah. They were. <laughs> When they were on sale, and Will was like, "Yo, what's up, man?" And he's picking up the same game as me. I was like, "Okay, okay. Nice. you know, you know, one day we're gonna have to play this <laughs> at the same time." Or and I'm more than happy to have company while I'm playing because I, I, exactly. I, 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 please talk me down, like buddy. Talk system. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to use the game sharing feature and let Jason take over. Oh, fun! He's like, yeah, Yo. sure. Uh, you know uh, what's gonna happen. <laughs> But yeah, 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 I'm I'm ready for that. That's the new game that I'm gonna be playing. Although, uh, yeah, gonna finish the Final Fantasy VII game and more of Death Stranding. Nice. Jason, what do you got? What have you uh, been playing? I've jumped back onto uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, it's been long overdue. I was in a lot of different places the last few months, but uh, finally jumping back on it. I'm re-leveling everything. Uh, you know, I just started Shadowbringers and then just stopped. And I was like, Ugh. What? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh like... stop just before Shadowbringers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I started and I was like, okay. And I was play through, but like a lot of things happened at the end of last year. So I was like, I need to put this on the back burner for a second. Now I'm back on it again. All right. Yeah. Well, Shadowbringers is epic and a lot of fun. It's, my, it's my, really, really good content. My little Lollafell, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> little potato. Little potatoes. Yeah, so but, I fired up uh, Division again. Oh, he's back. He's back. Warlords in, the... in New York launched. <laughs> oh, the, the was, season what, pass and all that? What made it so hard was, right, I was geared up for Warlords of New York to drop. Because I've I love division. Um, I know Jerry's quit, but he should come back. But like 
I woke up that Monday. I'm going to play some Division. I'm going to play some Warlords. Square Enix said, hey, guess what, guys? Your demo's here. <laughs> and I was like, well, <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Um, but no, play that. Um, and Jason and Jerry will be very happy to hear that I fired back up Luigi's Mansion 3. Yeah. Nice. nice. Back. Um, I had, talking about rage quitting, Yeah. the Floor <laughs> 9 boss made me rage quit twice and throw my controller. <laughs> Wow. So it's because you're in a pool. It's hard to control the little floating duck you're on. And the pool is lined with spikes. So the boss can hit you with a mine, which takes your life down, which knocks you into the spikes, which takes your life down. Uh, so it was one of those just that it was hard to control. So I, I literally rage quit and I hadn't touched the game since November. So, <laughs> so last night I fired it up. My son... My two-year-old decided he wants to come over and sit and watch Luigi's Mansion. So we sat there and played it and first shot at it. Beat the boss. I was like, okay, cool. We're good. See? Nice. So now See? I can it was your boy. keep on break. going. You just beat your boy because he calms you Seen down. Break. Need to focus. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Jerry, you know you know how Cody is. <laughs> yeah. No, they, no he's, uh, he's such a funny little kid. <laughs> he's gotten better. Yeah. <laughs> now that he's talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, one of the cutest every once in a while when uh, when we're doing our podcast and he wants to play, uh, Matt gave him his own like controller, so he's yep. always like playing with dad. But he's got, uh, a, yeah. he's got a DS2 uh, controller. <laughs> he has a um, off-brand Switch Pro controller, but then he's kind of claimed the SNES Switch controller. Nice. I ordered a pair of them. For my wife and I, and he's kind of claimed my <laughs> wife's controller as his, so he'll pick it up and hold it and think he's playing with it, especially like when we play Mario Kart. He'll sit there and think he's playing with us, and <laughs> occasionally so we'll uh, yeah. we'll fire it up and put it on the, the auto turn, auto braking, and all that, and just kind of let him play and do his thing, and he has fun with it. So. Yeah. I bet. So, Bree, got to ask you, before we yeah. kind of wind out for the night, we have a question that we ask all of our guests. Okay. What is your favorite game for game night when you have game night with your friends and family? Oh, video game. No, it, it doesn't could be matter. Video board game, board could game be card game, game, card yeah. game, like any. What is the family game that you guys tend to gravitate to when whenever the family's together? Like, what's the family game night game? Gosh, I don't, I don't really do family game nights. I went, you know, when I was younger and I like lived with my immediate family, um, we would play video games together. Um, okay. I have so many memories of us playing Diablo two and uh, Ocarina wow. of Time. Nice. Yeah. Um, what, what, oh like, yeah, we were a very oddball family. A little oh, I'm child actually, I'm, playing Diablo two is very strange. Get the grandfather. But... I'm, right, or... I'm right there with you. Like, my family, if we weren't playing Monopoly and it was just the kids, we actually would fire up Carmen San Diego on Sega. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Use so, the um... deck to find them. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we loved that game. Jerry, so we know how you that... are with Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would say like those are like my childhood memories. But as far as like. Now, if I want to do a game night with like my friends, it'll yeah. either be uh, one of two things. It'll either be Jackbox or Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> yes. Either nice. of those. Both great. Yeah. 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 Jack Jackbox. Yeah. Jackbox is a yeah. lot of fun. So fun. Yeah. Yeah. We've actually uh, the fourth member of our podcast, which couldn't make it tonight, Theo. He when he comes out in August, he's bringing Cards Against Muggles with. Oh, that sounds fun. And I saw. No, it's its own standalone. Oh, it's yeah, it's just like hard cards against humanity, version. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, nice. And, and there's I, also a Disney version yeah. too. Oh, I would love that's to see really that. Really funny. I bet that could yeah. be very, very interesting. So yeah, I'd have to um, check it out. So Bree, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you as far as both on Twitch and on your uh, social media? Yeah, I think Instagram, where can't everything. they find me is the better question. <laughs> of course, I'm on YouTube as Strange Rebel Gaming. Uh, but if you just search Brianna White, you can find me there too. Uh, on Twitch, I'm at The Strange Rebel. And I'm also at The Strange Rebel on Instagram and Twitter. That's kind of my more content-focused uh, 
Instagram channels and social medias. Uh, so that's where I'll post, you know, hey, new gameplay or hey, I'm live right now or anything related to the industry of streaming. Whereas um, because I kind of wear multiple hats, I also have social media for just Brianna and kind of like mm -hmm. Brianna acting and modeling stuff, which is a little bit separate. So you can find me there on Instagram and Twitter at it's Brianna White. Very nice. All right. Well, I want to absolutely thank you for coming on tonight and hey, my pleasure. giving us Thanks yet, for having me. Yeah, thank absolutely, you. and giving us yet another voice actor from the cast. That's right. You know, yeah. you definitely want to. I would love to have Erica on here and and Gideon and Cody and Tyler and all of them. You know, just get everybody. You know, Britt. So, ah. you know, hopefully John can work his magic because I know he's been kind of trying to he's, he's trying to he's trying to do that. But uh, no, we're just you know a bunch of fans, and honestly. You guys, what you guys are doing is amazing, and you guys deserve to be out there because, you know, to a lot of people, they don't know, you know, like you're acting, right? They just know you, you're Aerith. Yeah. You know, yeah. you, they don't know what other projects you've been in, so yeah. it allows us to shine a light on you guys outside of Final Fantasy. Yeah, so we're very been, happy for all of your success. Yeah. Thank you for so thank much you. for coming on here. And yes, thank you. And like like Matt said, uh, we are huge fans of this game, and the fact that you're helping bring that to life to a new generation mm -hmm. is just so exciting for all of us. And uh, we can't wait. And believe me, we know you're going to do a great job. <laughs> Serve all of the, all, all, all of the, the, the celebration coming around it. So thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. Yes, so I want to give a special thank you as well, you know, as a fellow Final Fantasy 14 player yeah <laughs> uh but just overall like you know i'm looking forward to hearing all of you guys in final fantasy again final fantasy 7 um like it's it's one of those that we grew up with as a childhood like a childhood of playstation yep. 1 all the way to now coming out playstation 4 or 5 it's yeah. gonna be amazing um ironically it's gonna be now that it got pushed back, it ironically got pushed back to my wife, me and my wife's uh, anniversary. Oh um, my goodness. So we are actually <laughs> going to uh, pick it up and spend a, a good few hours just the oh. both of us playing it. You know, oh, that's she, so cool. Sweet, she loves though. she loves the game and she she wants to play it yeah. as much and oh, both great. of us are on kind of like no media, no like eyes closed. Yeah. So I'm, I'm <laughs> and it's once once the the demo said, "Oh, there's a uh, something you get at the end." I was like, "Oh man, I don't know." <laughs> yep. yeah, Let's fifty now. It's a fifty-fifty now. And but FF Seven is going to be the game, the next game I play with my my son Cody. We we've, oh. we've finished Spider Man. We finished God of War together, and I was playing the demo on classic mode so he can actually hit the buttons. That's great. And kind of oh, do it and. Perfect. I am going to do a playthrough on Classic just with him, just to let him kind of enjoy it. So That's it's awesome. it's a generational thing. So it's yeah. very um, generational. Yep. So to all our listeners, I want to thank you for crashing game night with us and Bree tonight. If you like what you heard, always leave those comments, hit those subscribe buttons on the platform of your choice. I want to say everyone be excellent to each other and stay frosty. Later, nerds. Right.